if you could find an equivalent cultural experience to haircuts that you initially wanted to share, uh, what's the possibility you could start a second channel focused on just that? Okay, num number one, I think I'd have to come up with something completely unique and original and, and stuff. And I'm, I, you know, kind of, we kind of stumbled across the haircut experience when we were traveling around the world and really trying to document the travel. There's a lot of travel YouTube channels out there doing things and doing stuff. And I was trying to do something like that 20 years ago. Primarily you were, <coughs> it wasn't so much about the haircut, but you were focused on just the travel experience and trying I, to uh, I, portray that to the viewer. I wanted to, uh, I'd done a lot of travel in the past and had taken some photography, some photos and things, but I really wanted to show the experiences, the personal experiences. And it was not possible because there was no video camera, there was no digital video cameras back then. and. Um, and if there was, then it, you know you'd have to buy a broadcast quality camera, and it would cost like tens of thousands of dollars. So it was just not possible. In '99, I was really struggling trying to do what now people do as travel vlogs or travel things, but I, I lacked the experience and couldn't. I wasn't pulling it off. But the one thing that I got was the barber shop as a complete, you know, as a complete experience. And so that's how that, that came about. If I was, you know, I, I think if it was gonna do another channel, um, you'd have to think of something that was completely original, not, you know, because the, the YouTube is saturated really for travel bloggers and vloggers and things. Um, and, um, and I'd have to have a lot more time because this one YouTube channel takes up just doing the haircuts and the, and the few vlogs that we do do, it takes up uh, you know, more, it, it needs more time than what, what, what we have right now.